everybody. Hope everybody's had a good week thus far, had a good morning thus far. Uh, you know, I was thinking you know, about this message. You know, what if you knew the big picture? You know, we know when God revealed to us. Yeah. Well, you know, sometimes there in the New Year's, and you can kind of see little catchy sayings. You know, like, behold, I make all things new. I like the way that sounds, don't you? What's it talking about? Behold, I make all things new. All things means all things, right? We find that in Revelation. If you have your Bibles, if you would open up to the book of Revelation this morning, the book of Revelation. And I kind of explore what Jesus is talking about here when he says all things new. All things new. If you knew the big picture, would you want to know it? Would you want to see it? No. That's what's amazing is about in the Bible we do get to see a big picture. God reveals to us a big picture. Why? It's interesting. Hopefully we'll be able to see some of that in this morning's message. Revelation chapter 21. You found her place there, Revelation chapter 21. Revelation chapter 21. I just want to read a few verses here this morning. Revelation chapter 21. This is Apostle John. In a vision that he saw. He says, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. All things new. Remember that. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. And there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city. The new Jerusalem. Coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men, and he will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying, or pain. For the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To him who is thirsty I will give to drink without cost. From the spring of the water of life. He who overcomes will inherit all this. And I will be his God and he will be my son. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral. Those who practice magic arts, the adulterers and all liars. Their place will be in the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. And so when Jesus says all things new. He means all things new. And so in Revelation you might be see where I'm going with this with the new year, right? It's titled New Year. And Jesus saying all things new. In Revelation chapter 21, we see newness. Which means the quality of being new or original. Do you notice some of the descriptions he gave of earth? No sea? We'll get to that. Newness is the quality of being new or original. And so the Apostle John, who wrote the book of Revelation, sees a new heaven and a new earth. And if you've been following along with the past few messages on Sunday and online Wednesday nights, I hope that you have, you can see the need for newness. This need for newness for a new heaven and a new earth. That we've been looking in the Bible, we, we discovered a theme. A theme that I believe goes all throughout the Bible, and it's that word in trust. That God entrusts mankind. It's this Hebrew word, shamar, which means entrust. And it occurs a number of 469 times in the Bible. The first occurrence we saw is with God, where he entrusts man with the garden. He gives man a responsibility. He entrusts man to take care of the garden, to cultivate it. That's the purpose of and the man's purpose and mission is to cultivate it and to keep it. That's where we get this word shamar and trust. 
God entrusts mankind with the garden to keep it, to watch it, to preserve it. It also means to guard, to guard. Man was entrusted by God to keep, to have charge of the garden. We saw that man essentially, he let his guard down. He let his guard down and it tells us that sin entered the world. Sin entered the world. We saw too that sin, this Greek word hamartia, means a forfeiture that man lost. He forfeited his share. He lost the garden. He lost what God had entrusted it with him. He, he lost it. He turned it over. He forfeited it. You know, you can think about this, that all that people lose when it comes to sin. What has sin cost you, my friend? Think about all the things that you might have lost. You know, I think about people who's, who's been hooked with drugs and addiction, whose life's been lost. Things that they've essentially given away that cost them so much. And that's just one area of sin. You think about what sin has caused. All that sin has caused is dangers. That sin entered the world. And it tells us in the Bible that sin did not come alone. Sin was accompanied by death. Accompanied by death. Do you see the forfeiture, the loss? With sin's companion. For what is death but loss of physical life. A disregarding of the body. For the wages of sin is death. Think of the cost. The wages of sin. Sin entered the world and man essentially opened up the door. For sin to come in. And with sin came death. That pale horse rider. Man opened the door to a world filled with sin and death. He changed the structure, the composition of the world by his action, his choice, his trespass. Sin entered the world and sin came, and with sin came death. Death, decay. Man fell backwards. He regressed. Theologians often refer to this loss as man's fall, paradise lost. Man fell backwards from dust to dust, taken from the ground and would return to the ground. Man will not be the only one affected by sin, but the entire world, the entirety of creation would fall victim to decay, what scientists call entropy, this breakdown, this loss of energy. The entire creation affected by this one event, man's sin, his forfeiture, his loss. For man's sin, his unfaithfulness, not listening to God, not only would mean Man has regressed, fallen backwards into decay and death, but the world with him. For God said unto man, Cursed is the ground because of you. And so we see all these things around us breaking down, breaking down, decay, everything around us, dying, death, breaking down this entropy, a breakdown. Cursed is the ground because of you. The Bible tells us that creation has been groaning ever since, says the Apostle Paul. It's been groaning. The whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. And Paul goes on to say that creation still retains the hope of being free, of being liberated. Imagine creation having this longing, this hope of no more decay, but being liberated, being free, no more dying in decadence and decay, but free from its slavery and from its bondage to decadence from decay and brought into freedom and glory of the children of God. To enjoy the same freedom and glory as the children of God. And so dear friends, I have news day for you that there is coming a day there is coming a day the Bible tells us in 2nd Peter chapter 3 it tells us about the beginning see God gives us a big picture he tells us about the beginning how the world was created how all things came into existence the Bible tells us in 2nd Peter chapter 3 about the beginning of creation that long ago by God's word the heavens came into being and the earth was formed out of water and by water. The ancient world, the Bible tells us, was deluged and destroyed by the same waters that formed the earth. That was the past. 
That was the past. But there is coming a day, dear friends, there's coming a day, and Apostle Peter goes on to say, by the same word, that is God's word, that the present heavens and earth are reserved for fire, for fire, being kept for the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly. There's coming a day, a day of judgment and a day of destruction of the ungodly. Cursed is the ground because of you. That was God's word to man. First, we see the ancient world flooded. And the Bible tells us next will come fire. There's coming a day. Scoffers will come, says the Bible, scoffing and following their own evil desires. And they will say, where is this coming? Everything goes on as it has since the beginning of creation. The Bible describes these folks as having an intentional case of amnesia. They deliberately forget about God's creation, his creative act, and his judgment. So the Bible tells us and warns us not to be like them. We are not to forget. There is coming a day. Do not forget, dear friends, with the Lord a day is like a thousand years. And a thousand years like a day. The Lord is long-suffering. He is showing his patience. Not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. There is coming the day. The Bible refers to it as the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord will come like a thief, the Bible says. The day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with the roar. And the elements will be destroyed by fire. And the earth and everything done in it will be laid bare, burned up. John Robert. Oppenheimer was an American theoretical physicist and professor of physics at the University of California, Berkeley. Oppenheimer was a wartime head of the Los Alamos Laboratory and is among those who are credited with being the father of the atomic bomb. For their role in the Manhattan Project, the World War II undertaking that developed the first nuclear weapons. The first atomic bomb was successfully detonated on July 16th, 1945, in the Trinity Test in New Mexico. Oppenheimer later remarked that it brought to mind word from the Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita it says, Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. There is coming a day, a day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly, a day where the heavens will disappear with the roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire, and the earth and everything done in it will be laid bare, burned up. That day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire, and the elements will melt in heat. And so in Revelation, we see a few things I'd like to point out to you today. In Revelation chapter 6, we see these six seals, seven seals opened up. First and second seal, we see war and violence. The third seal, we see inflation. The fourth, we see war, violence, famine, and plague. The fifth, we see religious persecution, holy war, and persecution of the saints. And their souls cry out, just like I talked about this morning in my Bible school lesson. And when I was, felt like I was in this out-of-body experience, my mouth didn't move, but my soul cried out to God. Here in Revelation, we see souls crying out to God to judge the inhabitants of the earth and avenge their blood. And they are told to wait. Sixth seal, we see this great shaking. There's a great earthquake and the sun turns black. The moon is a blood moon. The stars fall. The heavens recede. And mountains and islands are removed. And people go into hiding. The great day has come. With the seventh seal, the Bible says in Revelation chapter 8, that heaven is silent. Silent for about a half an hour. And fire comes from heaven. Hurled on the earth. And not long after that, a third of the earth was burned up. With each blast from the angels, each blast. Destruction falls from the sky. With the seventh trump, 
The time has come. The day had come for judging the dead, for rewarding the people of God, and for destroying those who destroy the earth. Remember Robert Oppenheimer's words. Destroyer of worlds. Here, seven Trump. The day had come for judging the dead, for rewarding the people of God, and for destroying those who destroy the earth. The day had come. Revelation chapter 12 gives us a glimpse of the holy war, a war of religious persecution between Satan and God's people, between the beast and God's people. And then a world leader, a ruler of the second beast emerges. And the Bible says that it will perform great signs, even causing fire to come down from heaven to the earth in full view of the people. On the great day of God Almighty, the Bible says that the world gathers for battle at an event that we refer to as Armageddon. Again, the Lord says, look, I come like a thief. And again, the Bible tells us that a great shaking occurs. I believe this is another vision of the seal opening of the seal, verse, uh, the seal of six, that the cities of the nations collapse. Babylon is ruined and burned with fire, consumed by fire. Never to be found again. The Bible says that fire came down from heaven. There's coming a day when the heavens and the earth will be no more. The earth and the heaven will flee from his presence and there will be no place for them. Just like the vision that I had when I was out of the body. There was no space. There was no time. There's no place here in Revelation that says for earth and heaven in his presence. The earth and heaven will flee from his presence and there will be no place for them. And the dead will be judged. And there will be a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. And there is no longer any sea. If you have your Bibles once again, let's read. Why would God give us the beginning and the end, the full picture? Why? Why would he do such a thing? 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10. Why reveal to us this whole scope, the big picture? Why? Apostle Paul tells us. Picking up in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse number 10. For the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire. And the earth and everything in it will be laid bare. Verse number 11. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward. It tells us to look forward to the day. As you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. The day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire and the elements will melt in the heat. But in keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth, the home of righteousness. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him. Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation, just as our dear brother Paul also wrote you with the wisdom that God gave him. Hmm. We are to be looking forward to the new heavens and the new earth. You know, and I, often I talk with folks who, who seem so negative. Well, I was talking to some uh, just the other day you know, about uh, everything that's going on in the world. And I don't want this to be a negative message. Neither did the Apostle Paul. He tells us since we know this, our lives are to be different. Our lives are to be changed. God has given us the big picture. Our lives are to be changed. You know, often you talk with folks and they can be so negative, right? They can be so negative. And so when I talk with those folks, I try to change the conversation. I try to look at what can I do? What is my part in all of it? And what God has told me? 
He's declared unto me and you, if you are a believer of Christ, that you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Go and make a difference. Don't throw in the towel and say there's no use. Oh, there's so much work to be done. There's so many folks to be helped. There's so much good to be poured out. And it tells us that the Lord is patient. Do I know the time? No. He just tells me there's coming a day. The old order will pass away. Behold, he tells me all things are new. Have you been made new by his, by his power? Have you been made new? In Revelation, we see the new heaven and new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth has passed away and there's no longer any sea. Have you ever thought about why there would be no more sea? Why? Why no more sea? Remember the ancient world flooded by water? Now there's no longer any resemblance of the waters that destroyed the ancient world. And now something beautiful and radiant comes out of heaven. It's not fire, but the new Jerusalem, God's dwelling place. For the old order of things has passed away. Behold, the Lord makes all things new. And so as Paul, as Peter tells us, now since we know these things, how ought we to live? How ought we to conduct our lives? Hmm. I continue to live one day at a time, doing the best I can, relying on Him. Do I know the day? No, but He tells me there is coming a day. There is coming a day. He tells me that this message should have an effect on the way I live my life. How do you live your life? How do you live your life? How do you conduct your life? There is coming a day. Amen. There is coming a day. He tells us to look forward. Look forward to it. Look forward to it. No more violence, no more crime. What does he tell us? That he wiped away the tears from our eyes. No more pain, no more death. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad you had a Savior that came and died on the cross for you? Who defeated sin, who defeated death. Amen. Amen. We worship the living Savior. Amen. Amen. Our trust is to be found in Him. Amen. You have much to look forward to, dear friends. Much to look forward to. It might not look good this year. I don't know what this year will hold. I try not to go in that vision 2020 anymore, I guarantee you that. <laughs> I changed my verse pretty quick when the, when the Lord uh, took me to Psalms chapter 3. Lean not on your own understanding. So I try not to make any predictions. I live one day at a time, rely on His strength and His grace. Amen. I hope you're looking forward to today. Be where righteousness dwells. No more crime. No more sickness. No more death. Amen. We have much to look forward to, church. Much to look forward to. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we look at some of these things in the Bible and we aren't sure of a lot of things. Oh Lord, we live in a day that uh, can cause us uh, some of the worry, but we thank you that you gave us that uh, Sunday school lesson today, Lord, how we can overcome our worry. Lord, we're living in the days, Lord, where a fire from heaven doesn't seem uh, so uh, something that, that uh, couldn't take place. We, we now have the power to blow up this world uh, thousands upon thousands of times. Lord, you tell us that this earth will be destroyed by fire. We also tell us to look forward to the new heavens and the new earth. Lord, you have prepared a place for us. Lord, and that gives us hope. And so as bad as things might look, Lord, our trust isn't to be found in this world, but in you. Lord, we thank you that you have given us this hope when we put our trust in you. Lord, I pray if somebody hasn't made that decision, Lord, that they would do that today. Lord, you tell us that there is coming a day. Lord, I pray that all hearts and minds will be ready. And Lord, so I pray, Lord, if, if someone hasn't made that decision, Lord, they would do that today. Lord, I pray, Lord, we can continue to put our hope and trust in you. It's in Jesus' name we pray and ask these things. Amen.